Hello. So, in this video, we are simplifying complex numbers. So, remember, simplifying complex numbers, the whole deal, right, the whole sort of end goal, if you will, is to eventually, like, dot, 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 right? So, if I have some sort of complex number expression, I want to eventually, dot, 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 get this to be a plus b times that complex, right, the imaginary unit i, right? So it should be some real plus, right, a, a and b are both real numbers, so it should be a real number plus a real number times i. That is not what that looks like, right? So I shouldn't have division. There's no division going on, right? I could have a, a fraction as one of these numbers, but I, I can't have sort of fractions with, you know, the imaginary stuff on the bottom. That's no good. So to get rid of that, I want to use this trick um, that involves what we call the conjugate, right? The uh, complex conjugate in particular, because you may have heard this term before, um, maybe way back in the back of your brain about like rationalizing denominators and doing some sort of square root thing and, and something like that. So that's also referred to as a conjugate, but that's a different kind of conjugate, kind of. I mean, it's a math thing. We're not going to dive into that. But point being, if I have some expression like this one here, right? So I have, in particular, uh, let me maybe just write this sort of all out. So I have 2 minus 9i over, and I have minus 8 uh, plus 5i. Now, in order to simplify this, what I need to do is multiply the top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the bottom. So what the complex conjugate is, right, so I'm going to multiply the top and bottom. And the idea, right, is that I want to multiply by one cleverly, right, so it has to be the same thing on the top and bottom. Complex conjugate is the same real part and the same imaginary part, but I flip the sign, right? So importantly, and this is, this is really important, the negative is applied to the imaginary part. So if this were written for whatever reason the other way, like if this were written as like 5i minus 8, this is, this is a common mistake for students. They see this and they just flip the sign of the second part. That's not really what you want to do. I mean, like, it, it, yeah, just trust me, it's not really what you want to do. Technically, it might work out in various cases, but it is sort of better to be consistent and be safe. So... And in particular, the complex conjugate is defined as flipping the complex part, right? So if we ask about complex conjugate, which we may in other contexts, like the fundamental theorem of algebra, that's what we're talking about. And again, we have to do that on the top and the bottom. So we get minus 8 minus 5i. Now, the reason that we're doing that, to be clear, is that we want to set up a difference of squares, right? So here in the bottom, so again, if I, if I just sort of multiply straight across, I'm going to get this on the top, and we'll deal with that in a moment. But in the bottom, I'm going to get this sort of a plus b, a minus b kind of setup, right? I have the difference of squares. A difference of squares is the first thing, right, minus 8 squared minus the second thing, which is 5i squared, right? Because, again, secretly what's happening here is that this bottom part looks like minus 8i, uh, minus 8 plus 5i times minus 8 minus 5i, which if I think about this as, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't use a and b because I already talked about things in terms of a and b. So if I think of this as, let's say, uh, c is minus 8, d is 5i. This thing looks like c plus d, and this thing looks like c minus d. And this is the factored form of the difference of squares, which gets me c squared minus d squared, which is how I get this part over here, okay? The important thing is, is like, this is the whole magic trick, right? The whole idea is that we get rid of the i in the bottom, and we'll see that happening in a second, but we're going to get rid of the i in the bottom 
by multiplying by the conjugate because it sets up this exact form, this difference of squares, okay? So going back to this, I can expand out this top, which is admittedly gonna be a mess, it usually is. So I want two, right, I can do this carefully, two times that second term, minus eight minus five i, minus nine i times that second term, minus eight minus five i. But in the bottom, here I get negative eight squared, that's just 64, and I'm subtracting five squared times i squared, so five squared is 25, but i squared is negative one, so I'm gonna get a negative 25. So importantly, notice no i, right? The i is gone, so there's no longer an i in the bottom, that's a good thing. Continuing with the top, two times negative eight, that's negative 16, two times negative five i is negative 10 i, Negative nine i times negative eight is gonna be 72 i. Negative nine i times negative five is gonna be 45, that's the negative nine times negative five times i squared. Down here, 64 minus minus, so that's gonna be a plus. 64 plus 25 is 89. Now if I combine the sort of like terms in the top, I have negative 16, and then I have 45 i squared. But remember, i squared is really negative one, right? So this thing over here is really negative one, which means that I really have a negative 45 here and a negative 16 there, which means that I have a negative, what is that, 61 plus, and then the imaginary parts, right? 72 minus 10, so it's gonna be plus 62, if I've done this right, i. And now I'm dividing by 89, but remember I can split this now that it's one thing in the denominator, I can do 89 to both of them. So I will, maybe I'll do that in the next step just so I don't confuse anyone. So I'm gonna split this as negative 61 over 89, right, so negative that thing, plus, 62 over 89 times i. And again, importantly, this is now of that form, right? I have a real number, 61 over 89, plus a real number, 62 over 89, minus i, uh, sorry, times i, times i, right? So the whole sort of thing that makes this work when we're doing division is that multiplying by a conjugate to set up a difference of squares so that we get a nice real number that we can then split in order to actually have them as distinct values, right? Real plus real times i, okay? So that's that. Hello. So in this video, we are simplifying complex numbers. So to simplify a complex number, right, we wanna eventually get it into the form, right? We wanna take this thing and get it to be equal to some a plus bi, that's our that's our end goal, where a and b are some sort of real number, positive, negative, fractions, whatever, but the only place i shows up is one spot, sort of multiplying against one real number, which this is not, right? Like, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> so, in particular with division, division's usually the trickiest. The trick is to start with it, right? So we start with this thing, uh, nine minus eight i over uh, three minus i, but then we're gonna multiply the top and bottom by the complex conjugate of this thing. So I'm gonna get three plus i, right? The complex conjugate, remember, is flipping the sign in front of the imaginary part, right? So it was three minus i, so now three plus i. And we do this because that makes the bottom, right? If I think about three minus or plus i, right, where it's really one, times i for both of these. This is now a difference of squares, right? It's the factored form of difference of squares. So in the bottom, I end up with three squared minus second term i squared. The top, unfortunately, is just whatever it is. A lot of the times, pretty much always, 
it ends up being a bit of a mess, but that's the price we pay. Because really the bottom is the issue. If the bottom were a nice number, then I wouldn't have to worry about doing all of this in the first place. I could just split the bottom and make it nine over whatever that nice number is, minus eight over whatever that nice number is, times i, and life would be good. So the whole point is to get rid of what's in the bottom. To that end, the bottom now, three squared is nine minus i squared. But i squared is negative one, right? So nine minus negative one, or nine plus one, is 10. The top, we just sort of got to deal with. So I'm going to do nine times that. So nine times three plus i minus eight i times three plus i. Now, I can factor out this further, right? Just, or I should say expand this out further. So nine times three, that's 27 plus nine i. Then I have minus eight i times three, so that's minus 24 i. Minus eight i times i, so that'll get me negative eight i squared, but i squared is negative one, so that's gonna get me uh, negative and then eight i squared, that's gonna get me negative eight, right? Because it's really eight and then i squared is where that negative comes from, all over 10. So putting together uh, like terms, I have a minus minus eight, so that's positive eight, plus 27, so that's 35. And then minus nine, I, sorry, plus nine i minus 24 i, so that's going to be 24 minus 9 is minus 15. After you can read that. Minus 15i all over 10. And now I can split this, right? So that's going to be 35 over 10 minus 15 over 10i. And technically, this is an answer of that form, so I'm done. But I, I really can't just leave unsimplified fractions like that, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that. You don't technically need to, but sort of good good practice too. So I wouldn't suggest simplifying if you had some crazy functions or something involved, but come on, 15 over 10, you can divide those by five. That that seems reasonable. Okay, but the point is is that I now have real number seven halves plus right, because this is really sort of a plus negative situation, right, where I, uh, I can think of this as plus, and then b is negative 3 halves times i, right? So I have it in the right form. And that's that. Hello. So in this video, we are simplifying complex numbers. So to simplify complex numbers, again, we want to eventually get this thing to be of the sort of format, I want to have some sort of a plus bi, right? Where a and b are real numbers. The only place i is showing up is one spot with a coefficient of some real number. In particular here, right, I'm dividing by something that has i. That's not good. So to fix that, I start with the thing I have, 7 minus i. And see, that's over 8 uh, plus 6i. So to fix this, what I need to do is multiply by the, con the complex conjugate of the bottom, meaning that I want to take what's in the bottom and then flip the sign in front of i. So I'm going to have 8 minus 6i instead. Now, I just, I'm going to eventually need to expand this out. I'm going to have the top, that's 7 minus i uh, times eight minus six i. As a note, I make my eyes look weird, um, but that's sort of a adaptive habit to make sure I can tell what, what it is instead of just a line with a dot, because if the dot isn't visible, things sort of get confusing. So it's just one of those habits I've done, you know, picked up over decades of writing a lot of math. So you don't have to write fancy i, you can write just a normal i if you want, as long as you can understand what it is. Now, in the bottom, I've sort of deliberately done this, right? I've, I've set this up so this is a difference of squares factored form, right? I have this sort of 
A plus B, A minus B situation set, set up. So that gets me, right, if I were to expand that out, I get back to the difference of squares, which is just the first thing squared minus the second thing squared. Okay. Okay. So now I need to expand out the top. So I'm just going to sort of do what it needs to do. Again, the, the top is usually the sort of terrible part of the process. Like it's, it just is what it has to be. So sometimes it's good. Sometimes most of the time it's kind of terrible. The bottom though, and note, uh, by the way, that right, if I'm multiplying two complex numbers, which is all that's happening right here, I just, I'm just sort of doing the standard distribution, right? Like the seven times everything, the minus i times everything. And the next line I'll do seven, eight, seven times minus six i, minus i times eight, minus i times minus six i. Like it's, it works exactly the way you would think it would if you were multiplying two sort of expressions that you can't condense down, right? The second part, I'm gonna have 64 minus, and then 36 i squared that's really a minus 36, right? Because the i squared makes it negative and the 6 squared makes it 36. So as promised, now I'm going to do, right, I'm going to distribute out the pieces. So again, just to be clear, for this first part, I did 7 times everything and then i times everything. But now I'm going to do 7 times 8, 7 times negative 6i, and then i times 8. And wish my marker didn't just like totally die. Negative i times negative six i. <laughs> Probably can't actually see that, but you know, you know what I mean. So seven times eight is fifty six. Seven times minus six i. That's going to be minus forty two i. And then minus i times eight. So I guess I'll write that in sort of normal form. So minus i times 8 is minus 8i, and minus i times minus 6i. So then the i times i part will give me negative 1. The negative and negative will cancel here, right? So the I have just i times 6i, because those two negatives cancel. But the i times 6i gives me negative 6. So all of that becomes negative 6. So you have to count the negatives carefully, right? Because I have, maybe I'll draw it down over here. I have negative one times this negative times uh, i times negative six times i. Right? It's like these are the pieces that are all getting multiplied together. This negative one and that negative cancel. So then I have six, right? just the six left over times, and then I have two i's, i squared. But i squared is negative 1, so that's all negative 6. All right, so I have to be careful going through this whole process, but it's, it's not bad, but you have to be very careful because you can, you know, there's a lot of spots for error all over. So 64 minus minus, so that's going to be plus 36. So 36 and 64 is 100. And now I'm just going to combine like terms, right? So negative 5, uh, sorry, negative 6 plus 56 is 50. And then negative, 50, uh, negative 42i minus 8i is minus 50i, all over 100. And then I can split, right? So I'm going to have 50 over 100 minus 50 over 100 i. And technically, it is the right format. You could stop here, but come on. Really? 50 over 100? Like, we can reduce that. That's 1 half, right? So, for the sake of my sanity, I'm going to rewrite it as 1 half and 1 half i. Okay? That's really all there is to it. So, I started with my original thing. I multiplied the top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom, right? So, flip the sign for the bottom. And then sort of just worked it out from there. Expand everything in the top. Uh, the bottom becomes a difference of squares, right, by design. That's why we multiply by that thing. 
So the bottom becomes a nice number, the top sort of becomes a mess for a little bit, but then we eventually simplify that. Okay, and that's that.